All right, here's an exercise that sort of looks tricky at first. And at, at least when I first looked at, at this, I was like, how could I possibly figure this out? These two things seem like they'd be completely unrelated, but then you sort of look at the only piece of information you really have, and it ends up, you just do some simple triangle inequalities and it works. Okay, so let's say we have any um, matrix A in CM by N, and of course we've got these norms that we're dealing with. We have a norm on CM and an induced matrix norm. Let lambda be an eigenvalue of A satisfying um, the spectral radius of A is equal to the norm of lambda. So the the spectral radius of A is the lar is the absolute value is the largest absolute value of an eigenvalue of A. So if you take the absolute values of all the eigenvalues and choose the largest absolute value, that'll be your spectral radius. And so, of course, because um, this is a this is a finite dimensional matrix, um, there's only finitely many eigenvalues, and so there is an eigenvalue which achieves that maximum spectral radius. And so you let lambda be an eigenvalue. Of course, it, you could have multiple eigenvalues, like it could be a repeated, like just take the identity, um, the identity matrix. If A is the identity matrix, then all of the eigenvalues are one. And so any eigenvalue will do, because every eigenvalue has, the, has absolute value one, which is the spectral radius. Um, but anyways, so Lambda is an eigenvalue of A, so let X be an eigenvalue cor an eigenvector corresponding to this eigenvalue. So AX equals lambda X. And now whenever we have a an eigenvector satisfying this equation, we actually get an eigenspace. Um, and this eigenspace will have dimension at least one. And that's nice because this eigenspace will go through the, um, well, it won't include the origin, I guess. Um, but I guess the, 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 the only thing you really need to think about here is that um, basically for each eigenvalue, you get a lot of eigenvectors. And so we can assume that this eigenvector has norm 1 because if x is an eigenvector which does not have norm 1, then you define y to be x divided by the norm of x. And then a times y will be a times... Um, x over the norm of x, which is 1 over the norm of x times 8 here. Um, let me write it out. Let y equal x, over, especially because this is a shorter problem, let y equals x over the norm of x. x uh, the norm of x is non-zero because x is an eigenvector, and eigenvectors by definition cannot be zero. Um, so why is this, um, this, this quotient here? Then ay is a times x over the norm of x. And then you can pull this one over the norm of x out. And we multiply by ax. And ax is lambda x. So this is one over the norm of x times lambda x. And so this is lambda times x over the norm of x. And hey, that's lambda y. So ay equals lambda y. So we can find an eigenvector of a which has norm 1 because the norm of y is the norm of x over the norm of x. So you can pull out the 1 over the norm of x and multiply by the norm of x. And hey, those cancel and you get 1. So we can find an eigen... So we can find an eigenvector, a unit eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue which corresponds with the spectral radius. So with this all in mind, we have... The size of lambda I guess I should have a row of a in here. So the spectral radius of a is the absolute value of lambda and that's the same as the absolute value of lambda times the norm of x because we've assumed that the norm of x is 1. So this is just norm of lambda times 1. And then we know by our facts about norms that we can bring this absolute value of lambda inside the x, or inside the, the norm, and we get the norm of lambda x. But lambda x equals ax, since, lambda, since x is an eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda. And, of course, 
the norm of AX is going to be less than or equal to the supremum over all unit vectors X of AX. I guess maybe if we wanted to be, um, if we wanted this to be a little more, more clear, we could write like the supremum over all vectors Y of norm one of AY, just so that it's clear that the vectors that we're using, that we're considering a class of vectors here, um, which is independent of the particular vector X here. But anyways, this su supremum is by definition the matrix norm, the induced matrix norm. And so we have the spectral radius over here and we have the less than or equal sign and then we have the um, matrix norm of A. And that's the inequality that we want to prove and so we're done.